I'm Hitch. I'm Lee. Hi, I'm Lisa. Hello, I'm Faith. Hello, I'm Claire. And I'm we're Staffs! internationally. I think it's because um, we're running around having a laugh, being happy. From the moment steps first burst onto the airways and our television screens, everyone stood up and took notice. Not the run of the mill all boy band or girl band, here was a pop group with a difference. Made up of three gorgeous girls, Faye, Lisa and Claire, and two very handsome lads, Lee and H, steps were a unique act. They had a familiar Aberesque musical style and funky hip dance routines that everyone seemed to love and there was always new dance moves for every song. Within months of releasing their first single, Steps had become the hottest pop sensation since the Spice Girls. And in the next two years, the Fantastic Five notched up a string of chart successes across the world. Number one hits in the UK, Europe, the Far East and Australia has seen Steps elevated to the dizzy heights of pop super league. We've only been doing this a year, so I think we're just still taken back by you know how well we're doing. You know, we got gold disc, platinum disc for our album and for singles, yeah. and we've performed on some amazing shows. For our first single to do so well immediately in Britain, I mean that's a really big achievement for us. So we're really pleased. Presently, Steps are riding high on the crest of a pop wave. They've sold over a million singles in the UK, and their album has gone platinum four times over. They're travelling the globe, performing to huge audiences, and the demand for Steps keeps on growing. I think Steps have offered the world something quite new. I used to be a DJ in my time as a red coat, and uh, they're great dance tracks. We love like Steps, what they do, their movements. We love Faye. I really like Steps. Oh, Steps. They are so fun. fun. Peach is cute and he's sweet. It's gorgeous. It's like a fun group, they don't take anything really seriously. It's just fun and that's what music should be about today. They're just, just such fun, you know, and that's what they're there for, to, to give everyone a bit of a laugh, to provide them with this cheerful music. I just like how they sing and how they dance. It's good, accessible music that you can sing along to. They do seem to get on which is obviously good. I mean, like, I think good luck to them. <laughs> but they're, uh, they sell. It's got to be good. Even though Steps have been dismissed as a novelty line dance group, Faye, Claire, Lisa, H and Lee have had the last laugh. Today, Steps are pop music icons and best of all, they provide something for everyone. With their whiter than white smiles, their party on down style, happy go lucky music and easy to pick up dance routines, Steps have created the perfect pop package for the millennium. I think they're um, very accessible as a band. Uh, there's, there's one of them that you can be, you know, you, you can have your favourite member of Steps, but you can also kind of aspire to, to being that member. The music is there and it's great jolly pop music but even more importantly you've got the sheer physicality of the five steps that there's an amazing mixture of girls and boys. At the beginning the national press didn't seem that interested in the steps gang and they appeared not to attract much publicity but the same couldn't be said for the fans young people were going crazy for these girls and boys. We try and involve the audience in, in our act or in, in each song that we've got because we have a little bit of a dance routine you know sometimes it may just be a small move but it started off with five, six, seven, eight with the full blown line dance and then last thing on my mind something a bit more retro but um, <clears throat> I think because the audience can get involved with us and in Asia that they love that especially because they all love to sing and dance so it's very easy to join in. But in, in the Far East they're, they're like gods, they've been on the, uh, on the cover of Vogue um, somewhere in the Far East. Uh, and they, they did a shopping centre and had to have something like 16 armed bodyguards with them for the day um, just because they were going to get mobbed. Because we're really lucky because we're doing very, very well all over the rest of the world. We're collecting mm. discs from everywhere, which is fantastic. Yeah. But the good thing is we can still walk down the street in London and, and you know, not have too mm. much hassle. It's quite nice at this level. We've come a long way in a year. I mean, this time last year, I think we were just releasing five, Yeah, six, we seven, just eight. released 5, 6, 7, 8, so we all had our fingers crossed for that to do well and, you know, what's happened in the space of a year has just taken us all by complete surprise. We've got um, a Steps tribute band already, actually, so we're kind of on, on our way. And then, um, very good. Not, 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 we were going 
go along for the audition and see if we got the part again. <laughs> At the moment, Steps are a very successful pop group, but it wasn't always like that. Only two years ago, Lisa Scott Lee, Faye Tozer, Claire Richards, Ian Watkins and Lee Latchford were unfamiliar names. But unbeknown to them, someone was hatching a plan, and that plan was to audition three girls and two boys for a pop group called Steps. <laughs> a guy called uh, Tim Byrne, who had previously worked as a producer on shows like The Word, A Big Youth Show, and um, The Hitman and Her, and also The Smash Hits Paul Winner's Party, decided he wanted to put together a band that would be something totally different to um, what was out there already. He didn't want an all-girl band like The Spice Girls. He didn't want an all-boy band like Boyzone. So he put an advert in uh, a newspaper called The Stage, looking for three girls, two boys, and uh, from that, Steps were born. Out of thousands of young hopefuls, only five would fit the bill. They had to be all-round entertainers who sounded as good as they looked. After several auditions, lots of singing, dancing and conferring, three girls and two boys were chosen, and from the beginning it was clear that there was a chemistry between them. When we were put together um, at the audition day, they actually put all of us together in a room and they actually looked how we got on together at the audition. So I think that was part of the reason why we were all chosen, because we did all get on straight away. Not only did Lisa, Faye, Claire, H and Lee bond quickly to form a united team, but as individuals they stood out as talented and unique artists. We do all get on really well. We, you know, we haven't known each other as long as a lot of bands, but we do. We're oh. like, <laughs> we are like brothers and sisters now, which is just, you know, it's brilliant because it makes life on the road a lot easier for us. Thank goodness. I think what must have impressed him about Steps was that uh, really these people had uh, quite differing personalities, differing looks, blonde, brunette, um, and obviously girls and boys as well. Uh, and I think really that's what made them out to be the perfect combination is, is the kind of diversity, plus the fact they're all very good looking and uh, that's quite important nowadays to have that in the band. I mean their image is very healthy, they've got nice hair, nice teeth. You know, I mean, this is a really dirty, polluted world out there with, you know, like, fumes and toxic this and toxic that and filth everywhere. And it's really nice that there's people out there like Steps that have got perfect hair and perfect teeth and smile a lot. We like to smile a lot. We've, we've all got good teeth, so we like to show them off. <laughs> Being chosen to be in Steps was fantastic, but there was one final piece to the jigsaw. If Steps were going to make it big and quick, they would benefit from the experience of one who'd been there before. This came in the shape of 80s pop guru Pete Waterman, the man behind Kylie Minogue, Jason Donovan and Rick Astley. He was going to shape the Steps sound. He had so much success in the 80s with Stock Aitken and Waterman as a threesome, and he's back now on his own doing it and proving that he can do it on, on his own, so yeah, it means that much more to him. Basically, we're his project for the 90s, yeah. and, and it's just working really, really well. We're proud to have him alongside because he's just a massive fountain of knowledge. And he's not lost it. Thank you, Pete. The members of Steps were chosen not only for their ability to sing well, but the fact that they could really dance. So when it came round to getting them a record deal, their manager, Tim Burns, knew what he had to do they would have actually had to get a record deal. Uh, getting a record deal is obviously the, the important thing. Uh, and Tim Byrne went round and touted them to different record companies uh, to see who would want to sign them up. Um, that would be uh, quite an interesting process. Normally you'd send in a demo tape. Uh, I think Tim insisted that people at record companies actually did see Steps in the flesh because there's so much more about them than just their music. I and mean, with Steps, the music is there and it's great jolly pop music but even more importantly you've got the sheer physicality of the five steps that this amazing mixture of girls and boys these wonderful bright cheap clothes and then to top it all these far out fabulous and outrageous dance steps it wasn't long before steps were signed to zomba records in britain home to pop bay britney spears the backstreet boys and rapper tupac shakur they were signed for a one single deal. That meant this was their only song. It was a novelty record. Five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and that is what was going to be, um, you know, that was what they were going to have to work on over the next few months. Show us your steps. Hey, are you ready? So they've started doing things like um, schools tours and things like that to get known. <laughs> 
At a time when the charts were dominated by either all-girl or all-boy bands, Steps were offering something fresh and new. There isn't another girl-boy group from Britain at the moment, so I think uh, we're quite proud of ourselves because we seem to be the first of a new generation. Oh, at least Generation crazy. next. When Steps first single came out, the band had been together for several months perfecting their act, yet they were just another aspiring pop group. But things were about to change with the release of their debut single, 5678. Steps, as bands go, have been phenomenally successful worldwide. Um, although maybe you wouldn't have thought so from how it started off for them. Uh, 5678 uh, entered, I think, at 16. Um, in uh, towards the end of 97 and um, it rapidly started to slide down the charts before creeping back up again over the, the Christmas period. I think quite a few people must have ended up with that in their stocking. Um, and then for them from there it, it just kind of went up and up and up. They came, they came out with 5678 and everyone said oh that, that's it, it's going to be a one-hit wonder but they've actually capitalised on, on the market and, and they, I think they've actually they've got talent there. I think they've got three quite distinctive voices and I think that's why they're more than a one-hit wonder basically. The next single, Last Thing On My Mind, which was a cover of a Bananarama song, only uh, reached I think 67 in the charts for Bananarama some years earlier. Um, for Steps it was a top 10 smash um, and then of course there was the, the record that everyone remembers. <laughs> The Tragedy Heartbeat double A side, which was their uh, first UK number one. International chart success was one thing, but being formally recognised by the music industry was another. Steps had become one of Britain's most successful pop bands, and at the 1998 Brit Awards, the most prestigious music awards in the UK, they were widely tipped to be crowned best newcomers. But at the last moment, the award was given to little-known indie band Bell and Sebastian, causing speculation as to why this had happened. Everyone thought Steps were going to get Best Newcomer Award, like the best new band in Britain. You know, and deservedly so, because, you know, they're, they're a top group. But then this other band, Bell and Sebastian, won the award. And like, everyone was, like, shocked, because Bell and Sebastian have never been in the top ten, they've never had any number one, they don't even dance. Everybody I've spoken to said, who are Bell and Sebastian? Now, if they won this fair and square, that's what makes our industry great, that somebody so far left can do it. And I would uphold that decision a thousand percent. What is being claimed by many people that were there on the night, there were people who claimed at that Brit ceremony that they had fixed the, the result. And that's what I want investigated. Pete Waterman, who put Steps together, was really outraged and couldn't believe that his band, Steps, didn't win Best Newcomer Award and like this other band did. So there was an inquiry and they looked into it and they discovered that Bell and Sebastian actually did get more votes than Steps. In the press, Steps are constantly being compared to the legendary Swedish group ABBA. When the world first heard of ABBA in 1974, they had won the Eurovision Song Contest with an entry called Waterloo. This went to number one around the world, plus top ten in America. By the time ABBA split up, they had topped the British charts nine times, had several top ten hits in America and made seven albums. And now it seems ABBA have been reborn in steps. I think um, the ABBA comparison for steps is, is inevitable. Um, with ABBA, you had uh, four people in the band, two girls, two boys. Okay, there's, there's one more girl in Steps, but uh, they, they sound similar. The intros to some of the songs, the general sound of them, they are like a, an ABBA for the 90s. But the ABBA, ABBA they are the, the ABBA 90s. 90s. You know, we do sound upbeat. a bit like ABBA, but we never set out to. Maybe Steps didn't set out to be anything like ABBA, but it's not surprising that they've been compared to the Swedish legends. Their producer, Pete Waterman, is a self-confessed ABBA fan whose passion for their music runs deep. Because my manager's well into ABBA and he knows everything there is to know about him. Pete Waterman is very good at pop. I mean, he gave us Kylie, but I think with Steps, he's kind of learnt, learnt from the mistakes with Kylie and Jason. And it's a lot better. I'd say, so Pete Waterman is someone that's been doing this a long time and looking at Steps, I'd say he's learnt from his mistakes and he's now doing it better than he ever did. And we all grew up listening to Stock Aiken and Waterman, mm -hmm. so it's quite an honour actually to be working with him again. Um, now he's on his own and he's doing the same, you know, with the 90s, mm -hmm. he's, he's still doing it. He knows 
how to write four minutes of pop that's just going to drive everyone crazy and go straight to number one. That's a real skill. I mean, he might be working to formula, as his critics would say, but he's still got the vision to suss the right formula and then deliver. And he always delivers. I mean, with steps, he's delivered again and again and again. Ian Watkins grew up in an old mining town in the Rhondda Valley in South Wales. He came from a close-knit circle of friends and family and at an early age was given the nickname of H. This stood for hyper, as the young Ian could never keep still for one minute. Even now, H is very energetic. Whether it's playing pranks on the other members or running riot in a studio, he's always up to something. As far as our individual personality is concerned, I guess you have to start with, with H. I mean, he's, he's not the whole group by any means, but he's he's probably the loudest. His, his nickname, uh, H, comes from hyperactive. Uh, so he's always jumping around and trying to get your attention and is being very loud. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Ian. I try to sing. <laughs> you just try? I try, well, people say I can do, but yeah, try. H was a red coat with, um, with butlins, uh, along with a guy called Stephen who's a presenter on Children's ITV. Um, and you know, again, he thought, I want to be doing something a bit different. He'd done summer seasons at Butlins, but for him, Steps was going to be something totally new. Someone who remembers Ian Watkins in his early days as a valued member of the Butlins holiday camp in Minehead is his old Redcoat entertainments manager, Tony Cornell. H always wanted to, he always wanted to be a pop star. It, it, it's, if he could have chosen his ideal profession, um, he would have said that he wanted to be a pop star, and it, it, it's a dream come true for the lad. Um, he was always looking to see what was the hip and trendy bands, what the young bands were wearing, what they were doing, where they were touring. Um, he wanted to be involved in the industry and, and put in a lot of, uh, a lot of hard work sort of outside the Redcoat uh, um, hours of work, as it were, to, uh, to ensure that he did succeed. Even as a young kid, H wanted to be on stage and became a member of Spotlights, a local theatre company in the Rhondda Valley. Pat Evans is the director of the group and remembers H's boundless energy and enthusiasm. He was a very, very lively young lad. Um, young, very young. Um, and he was in a, a production of Joseph and his amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And um, he just was so lively that that's how you know the the h the hyper sort of came into his uh, his sort of being and uh, has latched onto him ever since and i don't think to this day he's changed as you can see when you when you when you do see him he's exactly the same h was always a very determined character and gave his all to anything he put his mind to the last show that he actually performed us we were doing barnum and um he was so insistent that he wanted to learn to do the, the unicycle, which apparently is one of the most difficult. And to be fair, he spent hours and hours and hours actually just trying to, to gain it, you know, to get there. And he did. And I said, well, whatever. You've done, you've put in so many hours, you, I have to put you on the stage. You've got to do it in some form or another because he deserved it, you know. He really worked hard at it. It wasn't long before H had outgrown the Rhondda Valley and needed to pursue a career in entertainment. H packed his bags to head to England and the bright lights of Butlin's holiday camp in Minehead. He then came and said that he was thinking of going into the, the holiday camp type of, um, of, of the theatre side of it, which is, you know, not the easiest of, of places to start, I don't suppose. Butlins is well known for being a starting point for ambitious young people seeking a career in entertainment. Many British TV and music personalities have come from the Butlins training camp and H wanted to be one of them. Tony Cornell remembers H's early days. When we first spotted H, he was, uh, he was a barman down in a bar called Molly Malone's down in Minehead and there was this uh, energetic hyperactive, over-the-top character who was, uh, who was always singing and dancing behind the bar. Um, we suddenly realised that obviously um, he would have made the ideal candidate to become uh, a red coat. So we poached him from our colleagues on the bar's uh, department uh, and he started off um, as uh, a children's representative. Uh, from there moved on into production shows 
uh, and was one of the uh, main character actors and dancers in some of the productions that, uh, that we put on down at Minehead. As a member of staff, he was he was always over the top. He, he was uh, 110 miles an hour all the time, which is wonderful for a red coat. That's exactly the kind of personality that you want. But sometimes, yes, you do have to sort of reel him in a little bit and, and calm him down. But uh, yeah, he was a wonderful lad. Got on well with uh, with the whole team. It wasn't just H's energetic and lively personality that got him noticed. He was a real all-rounder with heaps of talent. He was always a very, very good dancer, very good mover, natural mover, and could sing well. And I suppose that was the area that, uh, that I felt he probably was most strong in. He always uh, wanted to be, da be a dancer. He always wanted to dance, whether it be in one of the main, main venues with the guests, or whether it be up on stage as part of a production show team. Um, he always wanted to dance. Um, you could never get him off the karaoke either at one point. He fancied himself uh, as a bit of a singer. And uh, we said, uh, he'll never make it as a singer. <laughs> H was always a popular member of the Redcoat team and had a way with people, especially the girls. He seemed to adore him. H did have a broad appeal to both the young and old alike. Um, but there were always hordes of young girls following the guy around. Uh, and I don't suppose that's changed now. In fact, it's probably multiplied, hasn't it? Um, he, he constantly was getting letters and postcards and photographs and uh, signing autographs for the, the many hundreds of children that come on holiday to Butlins. He, uh, he was a star many years ago at uh, at Butlins and uh, he's seen his career sort of move on and uh, it's, uh, it, it was a good training ground for him certainly with the fans because uh, he had a fair few young girls chasing him around uh, the resorts back then. <laughs> so was anyone surprised when H got his big break and became a member of chart topping pop group Steps? Well, we were delighted when H got his break in, uh, in Steps. Uh, their success, is, uh, it's, it's been a bit of a roller coaster and, and it, it's, it's fabulous for him at the moment and uh, let's hope uh, it does continue. When I went to see him in, in concert in Cardiff, yeah, I did feel proud and I thought, yes, you know, I, I'd worked with him, I, I knew him. The part that I was glad about, that he was still H, he still is the same now when he comes home now. He is no different in our company than when he first started with us as, as a very young boy and that's, you know, that's the way he is. And I don't think he'll ever change, to be honest. He's still, he's like Peter Pan. <laughs> he, he's never going to grow up, you know. Is there a downside to being Steps? <laughs> H has set out to do what he had always wanted to do. Being in Steps meant he could dance, sing and entertain people all the time. Every time Steps are interviewed anywhere in the world, the first thing they get asked is about their dance routines. Steps incorporate funky, fresh moves with line dancing, creating easy to learn routines. And if you ever go to a Steps concert, you're sure to see the whole audience grooving to all their steps. That's the same at the same time. Well, we can do it, everything. So, you know, why not do it, I suppose, isn't it? Steps actually, funnily enough, hold the record for uh, the world record for the biggest line dance uh, ever ever done in, in one place at one time. So I think, although you might have traditionalists out there who don't want uh, their kind of line dancing popped up, um, I think Steps um, Steps have, have done well to bring it out into the public eye, and maybe they should be grateful for that. In England, especially, it's huge at the moment. So we thought, okay, why don't we incorporate a dance? along to a, a good pop song, which is what, exactly what we've done, and it's worked. They were involved in the line dance scene and the line dance market, and I think they were clever enough to actually see that niche and introduce um, steps in at that, that sort of level, knowing that they could actually develop it and, and influence the line dance market, I think. Steps dancing is, I suppose, quite unique in that it's, it's fun, uh, everyone can do it, everyone can pick up on it, to the extent that I think most of the times their dance moves have even been inside the uh, sleeves of their records. So uh, you can get together with your friends in the playground, you can learn the dance, you can do a, a whole routine and, and feel like you're in the band. That's a clever thing about Steps, it allows you to join in. 
you know, because you can put it on the telly and you can sit there at home and you can go like, you know, you can do it. You know, and there's all those kind of different routines that we all know. You've got your, your tragedy and your one for sorrow um, and your last thing on my mind, that kind of thing. It's, it's just something that everyone can pick up on, anyone from a, a granny to a, a, a seven, eight-year-old girl, um, and just, um, just have, have fun with it. And if everyone can dance, everyone feels like they can be a bit of a pop star, don't they? And I think um, everyone would like to be a bit of a pop star quite secretly. We, we did a gig at the Royal Albert Hall with Elton John the other day and the whole audience just picked up on it straight away and really they funny. lived it and it the whole good. audience, you know, was doing tragedy, the whole bit. Did a, a steps item in our recent school show and uh, all the children, well we hardly had to teach the children the movements because they already knew them before they even came to uh, the rehearsal that we did because we used one of the uh, uh, one of the numbers for uh, our finale. People want to join in. They like to sing along to them. They like to do something with them. So yeah, you've got a you've got a nice routine that you can actually do along with them in the music. I think that's that's a really healthy, nice, jolly thing, and probably one of the reasons why they've been so successful is because you can join in. You can do the steps dance. And with every song, Steps guarantee a brand new dance routine that all their fans can learn and groove to whenever they hear their favourite tune. Bubbly blonde Faye Tozer grew up with her mum, dad and sister in the mellow town of Dunstable in Bedfordshire. Up until becoming a member of Steps, Faye had had a variety of jobs, from modelling to being a magician's assistant. Hi, I'm Faye. <laughs> I was a singer and then before that I was a dancer too. Faye is known as, as Smiley Steps and I think that's just because she is always so cheerful. You know, she never, never seems to have a bad word to say. She always comes up, all right, how are you, hello, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so that, that's where, where that comes from. <laughs> Faye uh, joined Steps um, again through the ad, but she had been working in cabaret at the Park Lane Hilton in a band called Bourbon Street. And um, I think she just thought uh, there must be more out there. She was getting well paid in an incredibly smart hotel. Um, but, you know, she just thought there must be more to life than, than doing this night after night. As a young girl, Faye joined the Anne Gale School of Dance in Bedfordshire and showed from the beginning that she was extremely talented. Her teacher, Anne Tyra, remembers Faye very well. Faye joined this dancing school uh, at the age of three uh, at a, one of our branches in the Dunstable branch and then continued with all her training doing all the various aspects of uh, dance, obviously classical ballet and modern and tap as well as national Greek and character and uh, she always had a very lovely uh, singing voice which we encouraged so that she could have uh, several opportunities to both sing as a group and obviously to act as a lead singer in various school shows that we did over the years. I remember one particular school show where she was the lead part as Alice for Alice in Wonderland uh, and many other uh, both professional and amateur work that she did while she was here. She was a very conscientious uh, student and uh, very popular with her uh, peers. Uh, and uh, she left here at the age of uh, 17 after she'd done maybe 18 when she'd uh, finished her A-levels uh, to dance professionally abroad with one of our contacts. Faye's last job before she joined Steps was as a well-paid cabaret singer at the famous Hilton Park Lane Hotel in London. She would entertain diners at the restaurant with her backing band, Bourbon Street. Angelo Sorelli is the manager of Windows Restaurant and remembers her well. Well, I, re I remember the... Uh Cabaret in which Faye was in as the one of the most successful one, uh, young Cabernet. Uh, the artists were very, very excited. They they felt they had an artist with them, and uh, and that they they were full of care for her. Actually, I remember very well. And on top of that, Faye was a very pretty uh, singer, and we all like pretty singer with a wonderful voice. The name of the group at that time was Bourbon Street, and uh, Julian was the uh, the uh, group leader, and he was very very, very professional and and uh, a pleasure to work with, and he was uh, delighted to have Faye within his team. 
Even as a cabaret artist at the Posh Park Lane Hilton Hotel, Faye was stunning audiences with her looks and her voice. After a few days that she was singing in here, I, I, I suddenly stopped one day when I was walking down the restaurant and I said, hey, that's something beautiful. I just noticed something that I never noticed before. Uh, because uh, uh, often we get carried away with the service, with the guests, and uh, we give maybe uh, time towards the end to the artist. That night I remember vividly, I said, hey, who is that? And I turn and I look and I say, wow, this is really nice. And I remember sitting in a little corner table 50 on the restaurant on the left hand side where I cannot be seen but I can see everybody and, and just enjoying uh, 20 minutes of, uh, of excellent music and I, and I said to myself uh, this is a girl with a good voice and uh, I'm going to do a good business uh, and I'm going to have an excellent band and an excellent singer. Faye had a certain star quality about her and everyone including Angelo recognized that she was destined for bigger and better things. I approached uh, uh, Julian, the band leader, after uh, a little while, and, and uh, I said, well, compliments. You have got uh, a well-presented artist, a professional and wonderful voice. Well, he said, Angelo, I know that, but don't remind me, because, uh, you know, one day she's going to be a superstar. The time came when Faye had to say farewell to her friends at the hotel. She'd already been casting for other opportunities and jumped at the chance to become a fully-fledged member of Steps. We actually have our costumes styled for us because at the moment, as I say, we're really new. So they're just like trying to find an, the right sort of image for us. So we're getting consulted at the moment. <laughs> when we first saw Steps on our TV screens, we saw five perfectly coordinated young people. Their clothes were bright and fun. Their style was outgoing and sunny. The way the girls dressed especially made an impact on their fans. Lisa loves platform trainer shoes. Claire lives in combat trousers and Faye likes her space trousers. But whatever the girls wear, they always look the part. Step style is very easily accessible. It's bright, it's fun. It's not expensive, it's not complicated. Um, there's, there's items you can find there in, in any of your high street stores. It seems to be a mixture of club wear, um, stroke street wear. At the beginning, Steps wanted to make an impression and create an obvious image, so they stuck to wearing the same colour clothes. We just want to be coordinated together and just so we look like a team and we're a group together and so we can wear the same things. Bond. Like Bond. Bond. Same colours. We want to wear the same clothes. Because we're brothers and sisters, we want to wear the same. And Claire, Claire can never decide what to wear, so she just goes with us. <laughs> it's a lot easier. It saves a lot of headache. <laughs> but even so, all the members of Steps have their very own style and like to wear different clothes from one another. Faye's style is um, she's always changing her hairstyles. Um, she has always a different hairstyle in every single video. How many barbers have sacrificed for my wig? <laughs> um, she's also beautifully made up. Um, she's an expert at doing makeup herself, so she always looks really beautiful um, and always very perfect as well. Uh, Lisa's style, um, she's the most sophisticated out of the girls um, and is always seen wearing um, like short skirts, um, sort of like quite tailored outfits. Um, she's, she's just very, very stylish in her own way. Actually, I always wear lycra on stage so that I, I never have to iron anything. Claire is very um, sporty. She always has her um, belly button exposed and always seen in low slung sort of trousers, skirts, shorts and sort of bra tops. I'm not very practical when it comes to clothes. <laughs> Everything I've got needs ironing. Now that the group is more established, slowly but surely their look is changing. They've moved away from wearing the same colour outfits and their image seems to be getting more sophisticated. I've changed a little bit since um, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, I've gone from a curly blonde bob to these things, plastic wig. Um, Claire's had the chop as well. Lisa's had the chop. You know, we're all changing gradually. The but, but the lads have had the chop. It's, a... <laughs> <laughs> it's not about you know just to change, trying to change our image just for, for the audience. You know, it's it's we, we kind of at the end of the day as well. You know, we. we... Just... Go on, sorry. <laughs> just I mean, I'm the table. Thing, <laughs> Lisa
Lee Latchford grew up in the north of England, in Ellesmere Port, just south of Manchester. He came from a line of football stars and one of his relations even played for England. Lee looked destined to pursue a career kicking the ball around and even had trials for a London football team. But a chance to audition while he was at school changed all that. Hello, I'm Lee. I'm singer in Steps. Before this, I was playing football a lot. Lee, I think, is a bit of a, a joker as well, although perhaps not so much as, as, as H. He's always kind of nudging on the shoulder and trying to have a bit of a laugh. Um, but also, I think he's kind of got a bit more of a, an overview of things. He, he's a little bit more um, laid back, a little bit more ponderous about the whole, the whole Steps future and, and where he might be wanting to take the band. Now we're sitting here, you know, in Marbella with a third single with an album out and it's just all going so quick. It's like, wow, how, how are we doing it? Lee had actually done trials for, uh, for Wimbledon Football Club. He actually has uh, a certain amount of, of footballing history in his family. Um, and he, I think really he just kind of, he didn't get in there. He uh, had a keen, um, a keen desire to, to be uh, on the stage or to be in the public eye. He played Danny in Greece at a young age. and. Um, you know, I, th I think Steps seem like a, a good progression for him, really. After getting the lead role of Danny in Greece in his school play, Lee was encouraged to pursue an acting career. But he decided he needed a good training and got a place at the Betty Lane Theatre Arts School in Surrey, famous for another pop superstar, Posh Spice. When Lee came to audition for us, the thing that struck me was that he was very ambitious in the nicest way to succeed, and that's very necessary. He hadn't had, at that point, an awful lot of prior training, but he had the talent there which we knew we could nurture and bring out. All through his training, he worked desperately hard. He was a very good member of the college community and tried everything. You know, he, he did all his classes, he tried every discipline that we teach and I was absolutely thrilled when his ambition has now come to fruition because he deserves everything he gets. He's a great guy. Lee was a bit of an all-rounder and it wasn't clear which area of showbiz he'd end up in. When the opportunity to audition for Steps came up, he was ready to have a go. Lee came to see me to ask if he could audition for a pop group that was advertising for members in the stage newspaper. Our students always have to come and ask permission while they're training with us if they wish to audition anywhere. I said to him, Lee, just be careful because there are many, many people wanting to get into the pop scene. Go and see how you get on. All you can do is your best. And good luck. And he came back and he said, I have been chosen. And I said, well, that's fantastic. But please, just sort of don't count your chickens before they're hatched. Always keep your feet on the ground. And if it's going to happen, it will happen for you. Um, and it did, I mean, it was wonderful. It, it just filled that niche in the, in the field that was so necessary at that time. And he had the right image, he had the right type of voice, and he gelled, and that's wonderful. Betty Lane is thrilled that Lee has done so well in Steps. She always knew that his talent and determination were taken to greater heights. It is very exciting to see somebody like Lee pop up now and again. Well, frequently, thank goodness, for him. Lee keeps in touch, bless his heart. He comes in and has a chat. I must admit that um, he walked into a rehearsal I was taking about a year ago. And of course, to me, it's, hello, Lee, darling, you know. And all the girls suddenly turn round, and I thought, yes, of course, it must have an impact on them, <laughs> and, which it certainly did. but. Lee does keep in touch, yes he does. He also is exactly the same as he was when he was here. I haven't noticed any difference, which is very nice. Feet on the ground forever. 
For Lee, becoming a member of Steps was a change in fortune. He could have become a football star instead. But today, Lee plays to international audiences of pop fans rather than terraces of British football fanatics. If the Spice Girls are sexy and All Saints cool, then Steps count themselves as being a bit cheesy. They don't seem to care too much about being hip or trendy. They're more interested in making their fans happy. Some people think that we're not that cool, but there are millions of people across the world actually prove, prove everybody else wrong. One of the sweetest things and the most attractive things about how uncool Steps are is just how totally uncool they are. I mean, it's like they deliberately wear the wrong trainers, or they deliberately wear the most lurid kind of polyester, artificial, cropped, uncomfortable, loony outfits. People get the wrong impression of us, but you know, people go, oh, Steps, they're, you know, they're really cheesy, or they're this. We know we are, and we're not trying to, <laughs> we're we're not trying to pretend we're anything <laughs> different. <laughs> and that's, you know, we're not trying to pretend we're anything different. And that's, you know, they can say whatever they like about us, but at the end of the day, we're having a laugh and we enjoy yeah. what we do, so. We're having a laugh we're and we very want everybody else. about it, aren't we? I mean, yeah. you know, we've sold a lot of records worldwide. We've got lots of discs and everything. So, you know, so far it's going really well. And obviously you can't please everyone, but we're all happy. Lots of people out there happy, so very positive. Very positive. Yes. Obviously they don't take themselves seriously. They don't expect uh, the public to take themselves seriously either. Thank you everybody, thank you. <laughs> Claire Richards is the baby of the group and has been nicknamed Gadget Steps, apparently because she's a bit of a tech head and has a gadget for every occasion. Even as a little girl, Claire was a bit of a hoarder and on shopping trips with her mum, she'd collect items from shop shelves and put them under her pushchair. Hi, I'm Claire and before I was in Steps, I was in another band called TSD, it's three girls, and I'm from London. Claire um, is... I think uh, a lot more laid back. She likes to just settle down with a, a book, that sort of thing, when, they're, when, they're, when they do get free time to themselves. Um, but again, uh, as are all the band, just very friendly and, and very, very, very nice um, to you whenever you meet them. Steps was Claire's second stab at a music career. Before that, she'd been in an all-girl band called TSD, who had toured with Boyzone and PJ and Duncan. Top London TV and radio promoter Jeff Chegwin remembers how TSD came together. TSD were, were discovered through auditioning, I think hundreds of girls to find them. In fact, they were pre the Spice Girls, so in fact the idea was actually really sound. From the audition, three girls were picked, Cosy, Claire and Bonnie. Bonnie now lives in Bedfordshire and is pursuing an acting career. She admits that she didn't have the best voice in the world, but was picked to be in TSD for her personality. I just went for an audition in the stage magazine. I said, look, I can't sing. I really can't sing. I said, but I can make the group look good, and I can make her sound good, and I can go on the stage, perform, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I've got the gift of the gap, so can you give me a chance? And they did. TSD was a manufactured group, and each member was chosen for their different talents. Bonnie was delighted that she'd been given a chance to be in the all-girl group and made a big effort to get on with everybody. Um, I met Cozzy, first of all, who I clicked with straight away, and we got on really, really well. Um, she's a, she's a down-to-earth um, Cockney girl, and she, no, she's excellent. She's a real nice girl. Um, Claire then came along into the group. Um, she was the last girl to get chosen for the group. Jeff Chegwin recalls that all three girls had very different looks and personalities. TSD were all obviously three different characters. Uh, Bonnie was the, probably the most humorous of all. Claire was clearly a, a good vocalist. And also, um, everywhere I went, every television that I ever took them to, all the guys fancied her and were asking phone numbers and stuff. So she had that kind of a, immediate attraction. As TSD, the three girls had to spend a lot of time working, touring and going out together. Even though this was sometimes a little too much for Bonnie, she remembers those days as one of the best times of her life. She had a very good voice. She's, she has got a very good voice. And sometimes we had, you know, we, we did get on, because I think for the sake that we had to get on, because we were, we were, I mean, we were living out of each other's pockets for like a year, we were touring, and so it's like one of those things that you had to get on in a way. But we did have a moment, you know, sometimes we'd have a laugh and everything, but I'm the one that was always like, no, I've got the bigger mouth, I suppose, and I went out and had the laugh and I went out to clubs and... Because I, to me, I felt like 
um, but I felt I was so lucky to get in the group to start off with, and I thought you're not going to get this opportunity ever again to do this. It's a once in a million like chance that you get, so just take it as it comes and enjoy it, really. According to Jeff, TSD really helped Claire gain some essential experience in the pop industry, especially when dealing with the media. TSD was definitely a very good grounding for Claire. She, I don't know if she would recognise that now because she's in another stratosphere in terms of success, but it gave her all the right grounding. She did all the major TV shows from Big Breakfast to the Close show. She had the experience of working to cameras there. Um, she toured with Boys Own um, live performances every night nationally throughout the UK. Yeah, I think that experience is, is crucial. However, TSD didn't become the successful pop group everyone hoped it would be. Bonnie explains. TSD um, didn't actually make it. People weren't positive about us enough. The only person I could actually say that really pushed it was Jeff Chigwin, who actually pushed it for television. He wanted to make us something, something of us, and it's a shame it didn't work out, but life goes on. The boys in Steps love to slop around in their jeans when they're not on official Steps duty. However, being in such a high-profile band, the guys are aware that having the right look is very important to the band's success. Lee is a devoted gym user, and H stays in trim by being hyperactive. But either way, the boys always look the part. Um, there obviously is a bit of variation amongst their clothes. Lee, out of the boys, will always get the, the smart suits, and H will get the T-shirts. Um, but I think the, the key there is if that you want to be someone out of steps, then you can because you can recreate that style yourself. So do you always wear black then? No, we've got um, three outfits. Um, one's a red outfit, the girls are in red, and myself and H wear black again, and then there's a brown outfit. Brown shirt with the things on the shoulders there, and um, brown trousers, and the girls have got like leopard skin type tops with fur and a basque and stuff. So yeah, there's three different types of costumes altogether. H is the clown who's seen wearing very sort of, you know, fun T-shirts, often T-shirts with a print on that, you know, you'd want to go out and get. Um, he's always sort of wearing sort of like loose trousers so he can move around and clown around because he is the clown in the, of the band out of the two boys. <laughs> Lee is smarter than H. Um, he wears clothes that are Sort of you'd expect to see someone wearing in a club um, and he also likes to wear sort of the odd tight shirt to show off his muscles because he's the sporty one out of the two. I suppose it's a good question to ask whether steps care about their image and off stage of course they do they don't go around in, in the same clothes they wear on stage um, they, they have a certain look a certain kind of outfit a certain kind of uh, themed color or whatever for, for a particular song that they're going to wear um, but I don't think they, they mind having that image on stage. They know that they're just there for a bit of fun, and um, that's all they're trying to address, really. Lisa Scott Lee, nicknamed Party Steps, grew up in North Wales in the seaside town of Rill. She grew up there with her mum, dad, and three brothers. Even as a little girl, Lisa was always up to tricks. Once, she stole a hamster from the zoo and tried to hide it away in her doll's house at home. Lastly, Lisa, um, Again, just very smiley, very friendly. Um, and she's also got a bit of a loud streak to her. She might only be five foot two, five foot three, but um, she certainly knows how to make herself heard. My name's Lisa, and I, before I was a singer, I was a dancer, and I come from Wales. At school, Lisa was a grade A student and always did well in all her subjects, but she loved acting and soon impressed everyone with her talents, including her former headmaster, Bruce Pyatt. She was an outstanding actress. Uh, she was bubbling with uh, confidence and with enthusiasm. You know, it was infectious. She, she communicated very easily with the audience. Um, she worked very well with the actors and actresses around her. I mean, she had an extrovert personality, but it, it did not affect her studies. I mean, she always had her feet on the ground. She was very, very level-headed. After leaving school at the age of 17, Lisa packed her bags and left North Wales for the big smoke of London town. She wanted to develop her talents and pursue her dreams. 
Well, Lisa came up from Wales when she was 17 and joined the uh, very well-known Italia Conti Stage School uh, and really went from there um, when she saw the ad, um, applied and, and got the job. Lisa's big break was still to come, and after finishing her training at the famous Italia Conti School, home to other popsters like Louise Nerding, she worked as a singer and dancer, touring all over the UK and abroad. Lisa's ex-headmaster at her school in Rill wasn't always 100% sure that she would make the big time. I didn't know whether she would ever actually make it onto the stage. I mean, she always wanted to get into the media, into something like television or the pop world, but lots of students you know, say that. And lots of students do have the drive. But she, she was quite distinctive uh, in that you felt that really she was, she was going to get there. She was absolutely determined uh, to make it. It wasn't long before Lisa had got through the audition for Steps and was on her way to pop stardom. So what did Mr Pyatt think about this? Well, my first Im Im impression when I learned that she was making it now to the top was one of uh, great happiness for her. Um, my second reaction then was not one of surprise. And you know, when I thought about it, uh, I thought, well, yeah, she, she had that drive. She had all the abilities. Um, but she must have had a little bit of luck too on the way because you have to have that little bit of good fortune of being in the right place at the right time. And I was curious of, to, to find out about that. Uh, you know, so when, when I was going to see her next in the future, that was the first thing I was going to ask her. Did she, did she have any luck? Being chosen for steps was a destiny fulfilled. All the hard work and training had been worth it. This was Lisa's dream job. Hope for a long future, a long career. Um, success is what we really want at the end of the day. But the main thing is just to enjoy ourselves and have some fun as well. So there you go. Steps are one of Britain's most successful pop bands to date. They make chart top in music and have fans all over the world. As friends, Steps get on brilliantly, and as a band, they make a fantastic team. As for the future, greater things surely await them. With Steps, it's almost like they just live in a Steps, Steps world or a Steps pop video. And I think that's, that's also been a really crucial factor in kind of like, in their success and maintaining the success. They are perfectly and purely pop. And then, of course, there's the songs, um, which are just unashamed, pure, fantastic pop. Um, huge, catchy choruses on them, that sort of thing. So um, you, can, you can sing along to Steps songs as well. There's the dances, you know, again, um, you can dance like Steps. So th there's all those different aspects. Plus, overridden, I think, completely, and, and um, which encompasses the whole Steps phenomenon, is the whole way in which they're just happy, fun, um, constantly smiling and um, you know sometimes you don't get that out of life these days so if you can lose yourself in a, a step song or a step concert for a while then that's fantastic.